Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, we are making fabric paper or paper cloth. It's a really fun process and you end up with this sturdy and durable cloth that you can use in so many different ways and projects. I have journals. Look at this, really quite a large journal here. And here is the fabric piece that I made. I have little pouches like this. How cool is this? Look at that. Then there's tags and things. In this tutorial, we make this fabric paper and also this fabric paper. I can't wait for you to see how this is done. At the end of the video, I'm also going to show you all of these projects in more detail so that you get inspired and start creating. All right, so the first thing that you need is some type of fabric. I am using calico or muslin as it's called in other places. And I have ironed this piece. It's not necessary to do that. In fact, I haven't done that previously in the projects that I've shown you just before. I actually use this material, which is quite a little bit thicker than the muslin or the calico. And I didn't actually iron that one prior. So the ironing, it's not, you know, something that you have to do. You can use a really thin fabric like this. You can see this is, this is probably the same. This is probably just unbleached calico. But what I'm trying to say is you can use a thinner fabric. You can use even cheesecloth, right? I've done this with cheesecloth before. So the only thing that it's not going to work on is fabrics like this. These are upholstery fabrics, fabrics that have an uneven surface. So you can see here, it's got all these different pattern type thing and it's uh, textured, it's raised, things like this as well. This is also raised. You can't see it, but I can feel all these dots under my hand. And then, you know, something like this, you can see it's very, it's very, very coarse and very textured. It's not nice and smooth. You just want a really nice and smooth surface. And I suppose the thickness of the fabric doesn't really matter. This is quite thick and it worked on this. So for example, you can see this fabric, it has two sides. It has this oh, dirty side, let's go over here. It's got this sort of a smoother side and then it's got this coarser side. I feel like this coarser side would be more absorbent of the glue. So in the projects that I've done recently or previously with that fabric, I actually glued all my stuff on top of the shinier side or the smoother side rather than on this side it's going to soak up all the glue quite quickly that was sort of my train of thought i'm not actually sure if it would have made any difference all right so that's fabric sorted next thing you need is perhaps some tissue paper i just had an idea what to do with this then you can have your patterned napkins uh, anything with like pretty picture anything that's thin and that has some sort of a pattern on it you can use this isn't real money, it's just napkins. And then of course, I've got this beautiful tissue paper. It's very thin. It does have these shiny bits, which I was a bit worried about. I was wondering if it's going to work on that, and it did, so anyway. So that's perfectly fine. Use what you have. Something really, really thin is going to work. So for example, if you wanna decoupage a magazine image onto your fabric, you know, it might work, but it's not going to work for this project. So you just want really thin material that glue can seep right through. The first thing you need to do is protect your desk, protect your surface, and you want a non-stick plastic material underneath because all the glue will be seeping through and it's going to go onto whatever surface you put it on. So you want a non-stick surface so you can just peel it right off. Okay, I'm using a cereal bag. You can use plastic bag, anything like that. Next thing you need is some glue. I am using PVA glue mixed with water and it's quite runny. You know, I mixed it with water because I want it runny like this. So we've got the glue ready. We've got everything ready now, really. We can start the project. Get your napkins. I have already removed the white layers. You just want one ply of napkin. And in this first project, I'm actually going to do both napkins and tissue paper. And then I'll also do just tissue paper. I have a plan what I'm going to do with this. So we'll do two different things. All right, let's start with the napkins. So the first thing that I do, actually, this is I have just decided to do this. I don't usually do this, but since I've got all this glue all over the place, the first thing I'm going to do is apply glue directly onto the fabric. 
And in the projects that I've done previously, I didn't actually do this step. All I did in the projects previously, I'm just letting you know so you know that this works too, is I would get my napkin, pop it down, and then apply glue over the top. But I feel like having a wet underneath surface first actually helps the whole process. And then the next thing is grab your napkin and pop it down. I don't like any straight edges, so I'm going to move those straight edges off of my piece. I'm going to pop it down like this and then go over it again with glue. Okay, now I'm going to grab my next piece. You can have your pieces as large or as small as you want. Uh, you're just gluing stuff down. Another thing that I sometimes do is when I pop my napkin down, just to help keep everything in place, I will spray it with a little bit of water. That's just water. And that actually helps if your fabric underneath is not wet. So if you didn't apply the glue, if you just spray a little bit of water onto that napkin, it's going to help it stay in place. And now I'm just going to keep going. I'm not going to overthink this process. I'm not looking at colors. I'm just gluing stuff down. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to cover the whole surface. I'm using a bit of sticky tape here to help me remove this piece. You just want one ply. You can use a wet brush to get certain parts of your napkin and to get those ripped edges. And the most important thing is that you saturate the whole napkin with the glue and that you flatten it down as much as possible. You don't want any air pockets. You don't want any sort of lifted spaces. And what I mean by that is lifted spaces with air inside. Like you do want texture, you do want creases, or you might want, I don't know, but that's all fine as long as there's no air pockets. Because once if there's air pockets that dry, it's very easily peeled off later. So you just want to make sure that it's glued down the best that it can be. And if your napkin rips, it doesn't matter. You just go over it with another piece. All right, so now my whole surface of the fabric is covered. And now I'm going to start adding little bits and pieces like this, like little accents throughout, I guess. I'm just using an edge of one of the napkins here and just add little details. Okay, I think that's pretty good. There's creases and stuff, but everything else is beautifully saturated with glue. You can see that everything is stuck down. Nothing is kind of sticking up. And that's what we want. All right, this next piece that I'm going to do is going to be a little bit of a experimentation on my part. I haven't done it before, but I'm pretty confident it's gonna work. So what I'm going to do is grab a sheet of tissue paper. Okay, so it's covering the whole fabric. Next thing I'm going to do is crunch it all up. All right, so that's nice and crunched up. Next thing I'm going to do is cover my fabric with glue, as usual, using my big brush now. Let's see if it makes a different time-wise. So now I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the napkins, but I'm just doing it this way. I'm popping my scrunched up tissue paper down and really smooth. I'm not smoothing it down. We don't want smooth. We want scrunched up, but we want all the bits to be glued right down. You can see all of these crunched up bits and you can see all the raised bits. So I'm just tap, sort of pushing it down and like smoothing it down, but I still want creases. This is actually much quicker than doing the napkin thing and I'm thinking it's going to look great when it's done. So once everything is smoothed down I'm going to go over it again with glue and I'm not being stingy with this glue. I'm going to saturate this whole thing. It's the glue that holds everything down but also it protects everything and it gives it more strength. Another one of the reasons that I'm not being stingy with this glue, and I probably should have told you this uh, right at the beginning, PVA glue is just white glue. Some bottles actually say PVA on it, some bottles don't. It's just, 
you know, school glue, white school glue. And this whole bottle cost me $5 Australian. Two liters and plus I mix it in with water. So there's really no reason for me to be stingy with this very, very effective yet cheap glue. So there you have it. Uh, this has to dry and then I'm going to do extra stuff to it. Okay, it's the next day and this is all completely dry. I haven't started peeling it off yet because I wanted to do that on camera and I wanted to show you how it looks. And also this one here is dry and I cannot wait to continue working on this. So we will come back to this a little bit later because I want to do all sorts of stuff. All right, so now let's just peel this baby off, shall we? All right, so that started peeling there. So now I'm just gonna gently peel this whole thing off. We got one side started and now it's going to be easy from here. And look at that. There's our fabric paper. And this is actually ready to go as it is. Uh, but I want to do some more stuff to it. So first I think I'm going to get rid of this excess. And here we go. Oh my, look at the beauty of this. Oh, I just love this. So one thing I did notice is when you're using a thinner material on the inside, like I use this calico material, it looks a little bit messier on the inside than this one here, this uh, thicker material that I used for my previous projects. You can see how nice and neat it is on the inside. So that is one thing to keep in mind. But then again, I didn't saturate this material with glue first, like I did with this one. All I did here was apply a little bit of glue and then glue my napkins on top rather than saturate the whole thing. If that may, I don't know if that made a difference or if it's actually that this material is thin, uh, thick, sorry, but it does look a lot neater than the inside of this. Having said that, uh, this doesn't bother me at all. I, I don't know, I quite like it. It looks much worse in the video than it does in real life, if I'm being quite honest. But if I really hated it, all I would do is repeat the process. I would do this on this side and it would make the project even better. Or, you know, I could cover it with scrapbook paper or I could add crazy sewing all around. So there are options, but I'm leaving it as it is. The next thing I'm going to do before moving on to this one, or oh, can't wait to do this one, is... I just want to add some little details and I'm using these Artex paint pens. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. I haven't. Well, now I have. They're markers, but they use acrylic paint. And there's all these awesome colors. This is a metallic set, metallic paint pens. How cool. And so I wanted to go in and I wanted to add a little bit more detail. Just bringing everything to life, just a little bit. These markers are highly pigmented and they're water resistant. It's acrylic paint, it's perfect. This is like my new favorite toy. I could sit here all day and just outlining these little bits and pieces and just helping to bring everything a little bit more to life. These markers are really cool for like rock painting and painting on glass and all that sort of stuff. I really want to try rock painting. We'll see when that's going to happen. You can see the little details I added onto this journal cover. This here was really dark so I added some little dots. How cool does this look? Actually my plan was to go all around. So now what um, I'm just going to decide quickly what I want to do with this. Maybe I can cut them up into little ephemera pieces which seems like a little bit of a waste for some reason. I can make it into a journal cover of course I can make a little clutch like I can do something like this. It's probably a bit too big but it can be like a little clutch you know with a little gold closure here something like that pretty cool i don't know i will think about that but we'll come back to that oh i was waiting for this for so long if only you could actually feel this texture i know how bad you want to touch it does that sound wrong 
Okay, so here is what I want to do. I just want to paint it and make it look like faux leather, something like that. So I'm just going to go over it with some brown paint. We'll see how this goes. I just want to apply paint all over, but not all over. Look, I don't want to completely cover the orange is what I'm trying to say. I'm loving how this looks already. Wow, does this not look Halloween-y? Look at this. Look. I'm not going to leave it like that, but this is pretty cool. And I'll just keep darkening it because I really wanted to cover more of the orange, I guess. Maybe I'll go the other way now. That looks so cool, but I really want to cover more of the orange. The plan is to come in with a little bit of gold too. So, like I feel like if I stop at any stage, it's going to look good. Even if I didn't paint it and just left it orange, it already looked good without anything. But I had a plan in mind, so I'm just going for it. So, I don't know if this happens to you sometimes. Oh, oh, well, it's happening to me right now. When you're doing something like this, and now I'm thinking, oh, I should have left it when I first started, when I first added just a little bit of the brown, it looked so good, I should have left it at that, this is just ruining it, and then I'm afraid to sort of keep going with the project, and I felt the same when I was painting as well, the previous piece. How do you go about when you're in that situation? I kind of uh, just keep going. I keep having those thoughts and then I just keep doing and I just keep going. And oftentimes it looks better in the end. We'll see how this is going to turn out. So now I can either uh, do a few different things. I can sort of do the same what I've done so far with this brush, smush it all in. I can use a smaller brush and kind of go in. Uh, I can use something like this, I pop a little bit of gold on here and then just keep stamping all over. But I think I'm going to, I might do all three, we'll see what looks good. So what I'm going to start off with is just brushing it on lightly onto the raised edges. So I just got a little bit of paint on my brush, but I've got too much. I just kind of want, it's just a little bit of paint, let's see. Alright, seems like I'm going with the smooshing technique, like I'm getting a lot of gold on there and that's what I'm sticking to. Too much gold in one spot so I can just do this, yes? Look at this, like the closer you get the more you can see. How cool does this look? It looks like dragon skin from here, doesn't it? It's really hard to bring a project to life on video because sometimes it looks completely different in video than it does in real life. I can actually peel this right off because that paint is it's almost dry but it, the underneath is completely dry. This comes off so beautifully. So what I'll do is because this is a video on making this fabric paper, if I actually made it, you know how it's done. I'm going to go ahead and make projects out of this off camera otherwise the video is going to be way too long. I'll be right back to show you what I've done. Actually before I go and get busy making stuff, can you please tell me which one of these two is your favorite? This one with lots and lots of bits and pieces or this one? If I had to choose between the two, 100 million percent I will go with this one. Even though I think these make um, more fun looking journal covers, I just love this look a lot better. And in all honesty, this is a much quicker process than gluing each piece down. So this is my favorite. What about you? Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below. And here is what I made. This is the tissue paper one. I'm sure that you can recognize it. And I'm going to explain in a moment exactly how I made this journal, obviously. It's a journal and it's completely finished. I'll show you this in more detail in a second. This piece I didn't get to finish. I just uh, chopped off a little bit on the side and I made these little tags. I'm not entirely sure what you would call them. I was just going with the flow and I just like I said, chopped off the side here. You can see that's how it was. And all I did is sew around them. See at the back, just blanket stitch. 
and popped some chain on the top a little charm there and what can you use something like this for i guess it can be like um it can be attached to the spine of the journal or perhaps i'm just going with the flow here perhaps it can be attached to a handbag maybe a shorter one something like this for example something like that i don't know this is only coming to mind because here is my favorite bag and it's got this beautiful kind of an attachment and it kind of you know just makes the whole bag look a whole lot better so that's kind of the thing that i had in mind maybe attach one of these and then have another little thing next to it i know it's got nothing to do with journals and stuff like that but i didn't think about that while i was making them i was just going with the flow anyway this is where it took me all right so that's that and eventually this is going to be a journal cover rather large journal is going to be kind of like an oversized uh, travels book or not travels notebook this turned out absolutely dreamy even better than i anticipated and all i did i'll tell you exactly what i did from when we left off it looked like this when we left off and it had all these extra bits on the ends right so this is the exact size of the fabric and then it had the overlapping bits and then all i did is turn it around and pop those overlapping bits down so that i have this sealed edge let me bring it closer so all I did is bring that tissue paper over the fabric and glue it down. That's all done before gluing this piece down. Next thing I did is I reinforced the spine. So this thing that you see here is the ribbon. And here it is. It's just ribbon and it's even got the little wire. It's, it's rather thin, the wire in there. I didn't even bother taking it out. All I did is trim it down to size and glued it in the middle so let's say if i was doing this journal here all i did is found the middle by folding it in half and then i glued the ribbon right there in the middle and then of course i added a little bit of that ribbon throughout the journal i'll do a quick flip through so you'll be able to see it after that was done i trimmed down some scrapbook paper it's not cardstock or anything it's still quite pliable trimmed it down, glued it down, and then I went and sewn all around. So you, if I do this, you'll be able to see the sewing on this side. You can actually uh, see it, even though it's kind of blending in and you can hardly really see it because the color is exactly the same as the front here. It's holding everything in place. Nothing is going to be coming undone. Even though, I mean, gluing down is just fine. I like to sew around just to make double sure. But taking one step back, I forgot to mention that I added this book plate. And you can see here, I used brads. So the brads are holding it down and it's also glued down. But I didn't want the brads to be visible. So I did that step before gluing this piece down, the scrapbook paper. This piece here is just a piece of cork, nothing spectacular. And I outlined it with the Artex metallic markers that I've shown you before. And I just used the gold. I outlined all of that. And then this is just wooden chipboard. And I also colored the outer piece out. It's actually two pieces and glued it down. And there we have a book plate. All right. And let's just have a quick little flip through. And I know it's unrelated to the actual creating of the fabric paper. So here's the journal. I'm going to do a really quick flip through. Uh, as I was saying, even though it's unrelated to the video itself, I feel like it's nice to give you some extra inspiration in case if you're wondering where I get these extremely large pages from. I'm going to tell you in a second. I'll just keep flipping here because this is quite a large journal. So, you know, the pages are a lot bigger than standard A4 size. And look at this little ruffle here sewn directly on. Here, I was just playing around with sewing. You will see it on the other side. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it, but it's all right. Here is a little scrappy piece of some fabrics and sewn on, and that also opens up. So this is most definitely, as you can see, a writing journal. Absolutely lots of space in here. I might pop this into my Etsy shop eventually. Just really, really love this journal so much. Again, here, just a little bit of 
something sewn down, some lace and fabric. And again, this opens up journaling spot in there. I'll show you in a moment. As soon as I uh, stop flipping this through, I'll show you about the pages. Here's just a little bit of sewing again, you know, a bit of a wiggly line there. And you will see lots of these large pages that open up and they had to be trimmed down. So really I could have had pockets there as well. Some stickers there and this is a journaling spot. This is a vintage page. I think this might be a true piece of vintage ephemera right here, 1964. That wasn't really that long ago, was it? And on this side, again, this opens up and there's a journaling spot there. Some more little fabric sewn there onto the side. And that's the other end of that page that I was... So all I did, imagine a page here, and I just did kind of that that's all i did i mean it could have been done better but i thought why didn't i think of that before i always just sew around the edges of a page and here's a little kind of like a little tuck spot there and here is a pocket again large pocket and then this is also a pocket lots of lots of spaces to write and flip out pages and little bits and pieces and here's that ribbon again to kind of ties in everything together and then this one opens up writing and then this is a pocket here and there we have it that ribbon visible and that is the back all right so this is where i get my large pages from this is my kids writing books at the end of the year they bring home unused you know portions of books and whatnot and I just remove the pages from the middle and there's my large page that I then tea dye and perfect for large journals and also of course these scrap scrapbook uh, books they're very inexpensive and they can be they can have yes you know really flimsy cheap paper which this one happens to have really flimsy paper but most of them are not too bad actually this one it says premium paper it doesn't say the weight but i would say it's like printer paper but anyway that's where i get my large pages from and it's really inexpensive it's usually stapled together in the middle you can very easily remove it here's one that's been avocado dyed and then when i'm using it in a large journal you know oftentimes i would have to trim it down which i'm going to show you this next because that's where this comes from when i made this journal this one here i had to trim the pages down and then i would fold it in this way or this way to create those you know flip out pages that's all that is but then i had all of these off cuts which then of course again i made another little journal here just from all of the offcuts these are all the offcuts and of course i used the fabric paper that i have previously made so that's the second project i wanted to show you and that came from this fabric piece i made quite a large piece of fabric paper and i made a few things from it this pouch and you can see the back it's all fun and colorful and then also from that piece of fabric i made these tags I didn't back them with paper so really I mean you could write on them that's what we use tags for in journals for extra writing space so I'm not really entirely sure about the usefulness of this like how practical is it actually to use in a journal but how beautiful does it look I mean it's totally worth it it can just be a little thing in a journal all of those were made from one large piece another thing I made is this journal and you know what i'm totally 100 percent in love with this journal and i'm going to tell you about this closure and how i did it and what it is because i was pondering what type of a closure i should have for this journal it's quite a large and heavy journal and this is the fabric paper that i used look at that isn't that just i wish you could jump through the screen and just have a little feel of this or even better make your own and then you'll have your own beautiful work to marvel at all right and here is the journal so again i didn't do anything on the inside of the fabric paper and i'm saying that just so you know that the making that fabric paper is sufficient you don't need to do any of this i knew i wanted this to be like a wraparound journal and i just felt like 
I didn't want to be adding anything on here. Plus, this fabric that I used is a little bit thicker, only very slightly, than the calico or the muslin fabric that I used in this journal. All right, I'll just do a little quick flip through. There's two signature uh, signatures in this journal that are bound into the spine and I didn't reinforce the spine or anything like that, just bound it straight in and I feel like it's nice and secure. Perhaps I could have ironed this. I didn't. I think it adds to the overall, I don't want to say messy look, but you know, uh, this is napkin transfer on some paper. And then this one again opens up. Of course, there's again, a lot of these pages that open up. This is avocado dyeing. i show you how I do this process in one of my videos which i will link up here and in the description down below let's do this real quick shall we okay the here is that tissue paper i also want to show you what i actually i'll show you this next i don't know what to show you first you see i want to show you all at once so that's this tissue paper and i still have lots of it left and i'm so going to use every single piece and you will see throughout this book i've used quite a bit of it you know throughout let's keep flipping just a piece of fabric over here Lots of tea dyed pages and all that stuff. Look at this. How did I achieve this? Uh, I think it was with when I was doing my coffee dyeing or tea dyeing and I added some paint, acrylic paint, shimmer acrylic paint, all that sort of stuff. This is an envelope and then fun stuff inside the envelope. And there's a, even an envelope in an envelope. I think that tissue paper just looks absolutely beautiful with that black thread. Now this uh, comes off and opens up and that's a b for b for b for b see i don't know if that's a b for b but it is now more of that paper what's this a little cluster i can never remember what things are called as i'm filming here is a laminated book marker book page what's it called another little journaling spot this is also a cutout from a magazine here's a large envelope and then again this part opens up here's a vellum page this is actually came from a large sample book of wallpaper samples and just clip things in same thing again i'm not going to open everything because there's a lot of things again an envelope and sewing paper Edith Holden, lots of tea dyed pages as you can see. These are little pockets. I made this in a video on using junk mail envelopes to make little things. And they're pockets so you can pop stuff in. And of course, you know, it comes up completely off. So it's sewn together by a piece of fabric. And we keep on going. Nearing the end, again, this opens up. And then newspaper happenings from the year 1911 a large tag and another large tag and this here is dried baby wipes and I was wiping paints and all that sort of stuff and yeah made a little journaling card or a tag and then this is from a video also pleated paper flowers I will link that down below and it's actually a paper clip and that's holding this piece of paper that opens up in place and then yeah there you go nearly reaching the end this one opens up edith holden beautiful sewing paper and then just another envelope i was in an envelopey kind of mood and then what's this here i bet there's more envelopes yeah oh no this actually opens up so it's writing space but actually it's a magazine page so I just backed it with some paper. You need writing space. That's what this is about. The more writing space, the better. And also the more writing space, the more you can decorate and, you know, add all sorts of stuff. And there we have it. So with the closure, this wraps around. And then I found this cord type thing in a secondhand shop. And I just sewn it like that. Okay, I've never done this before. I thought, how is this going to look? And you can see kind of what that looks like. I burnt that with the lighter just so it's not unraveling because it kind of unravels immediately as soon as you cut it. And then we have the loop and then I wrap it around, wrap it around. Maybe I'll pop it through. 
I'll show you this in a moment. So it goes through maybe once, it doesn't have to go through there and then again. I don't know, it's through twice, so you can see. Okay, and then down here, I just super glued that inside this piece. And that piece, you can see it here, came off of this thing that somebody gave to me. So these were necklaces. And then I take the chain off, you might recognize the chain. See, those chains, that's where I use that. And then I kind of pull that out. What I'm trying to demonstrate, I mean, I know you're not gonna have this, but what I'm trying to demonstrate is that you use what you have. And you just kind of find ways to make it work for your project. And then over here, this is a little heart pendant that I had in my box of goodies for a little while. And it has now found a home. So that's this journal. I'm actually quite proud of this journal, I have to say. I actually have to say I was really excited about this whole project, this whole venture. I was quite excited. I can't fit everything into the screen. And I really want to because I'm hoping that you're going to get excited about this project. I'm hoping you're going to go and make your own. But I have one more thing to show you, which is this. So all I did here, and you can't even see it in the video, but remember this tissue paper? By the way, Anne, thank you so much. Anne is one of my beautiful subscribers that sent me a box of amazing stuff. And she wrapped one of the books in this beautiful tissue paper. And once again, you know, of course, I'm going to use it because, I mean, look at it. Anyway, let's get back to this. So I had my fabric down. And then I, instead of scrunching the tissue paper and gluing it down that way, like I did for this one here, I simply ripped pieces so you can't see it which is surprising but it's a whole lot of overlapped ripped pieces like it actually looks like it's just one whole piece but it's not like you can find you can see a little seam here of ripped pieces and they're overlapping so you can see some of the gold parts are really gold and then the gold parts that are underneath another layer are not quite so gold i hope you know what i mean so i just took pieces like this glued them down then I get another piece like this, glue it down, overlapping, overlapping, overlapping until I've finished and covered the whole piece of the fabric. And then I made a simple naked journal. I didn't do any embellishing in this one. This is what the closure looks like, just an eyelet at the back. Pop some string through that eyelet and then it wraps around this little piece here, just really simple. And then again, this comes in like a little set like that. I think it was actually Anne who sent me these brads too. Aren't they just beautiful? And then this circle underneath. I have a stamp that I bought on eBay. That's what that is. It was really, really cheap. And I stamped some tea dyed scrap cardstock that I have. And that's, you know, look at that. How cool. Cut out the circles. And it looks like something amazing like this up close check that out but really it's just a one dollar stamp and some scrap tea dyed cardstock and all this black thread makes it look even more beautiful i think anyway it makes it pop and there's a little pouch it can be like a little wallet i don't use an actual wallet anymore I just have a pouch like this with all my stuff in there so that's pretty cool we kind of did two different things like we made the paper and then i spent quite a bit of time showing you these pieces sometimes people can get stuck with oh, what do you do with it you know you they get stuck at the what do you do with it point like with these i ask myself often that question when i'm making things uh, but i usually ask it after i make something or you know when i'm halfway through what sir what purpose does this serve sometimes it doesn't even have to serve any purpose it can just be made for the sake of the creative process for the sake of making it so not everything has to have an actual purpose but if I'm going to spend time on something, then I want it to be useful in some way, I guess. And that's also the reason why I made lots of journals from this fabric paper, rather than things like this. I only made this for you guys, like I didn't make this for myself. If I wasn't filming this video, I wouldn't opt for a tag like this, because I feel like all this time I have put into making these fabric pieces, I would much rather have a large piece of something like an actual journal 
because of the time I spent in preparing the paper. That's how I personally feel about it. So chopping it down in little pieces is not something that I was very happy about doing. I would much rather keep it in one large piece like this and make a, a, a something significant out of it. Which is not to say that this isn't significant, but usually something like this will get lost inside a journal somewhere. Whereas here, I mean, do I even need to say it? This is quite obviously the star of the show. The whole show, this whole video, I think, for me. So I would really love to know what you guys think about this. Please let me know what is your favorite thing. This one looks much better in person than it does in camera. This is actually, when I tilt it this way, this is how it looks in person rather than like this. So the wow effect is kind of a little bit lost in video. All right, I think this is where I'm going to end this video. I would love to hear your thoughts. What is your favorite project? Have you made fabric paper before? And if you haven't, will you make some? Or if you have, will you make some again? I mean, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.